Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit more about connecting LiPo batteries in serial parallel and doing it both ways as well. Now this is not a new video. I actually made this first version of this video about four years ago. So if you're interested in going and watching what I was doing four years ago, I'll put a link here and I'll also put a link to this new video in that original video as well. But the whole point of this is to revisit this topic because it's something that I still get an awful lot of comments and questions on. Now, the concept itself is relatively straightforward, but if you haven't done this and are not sure what the do's, don'ts are and what the difference between serial and parallel is and why you'd use one over the other, then hopefully this video will make it a little bit clearer. So thank you to everybody that's commented on that original video and asked some really great questions. I'm actually going to talk about this and cover it again here, but hopefully with a slightly more practical slant. This time we're going to start off with a warning. Be careful when you are going to try and connect LiPo batteries in series or parallel. It's much more common these days. Lots of people do parallel charging where you plug the batteries in side by side on some kind of balance board as part of your charger. And also lots of people plug things in serial as well. So it's quite a common way to do it if you are trying to charge more than one battery at once and doing it for speed or it might be that in your particular model you're struggling for space but the original reason that i did that video four years ago is that back when i did it lipo batteries were blooming expensive so if you wanted a bigger pack you had to pay an awful lot more money so for example one of the things that i would do would be to get two of my 2200 3s packs and connect them together to make a 2200 6s pack that were more useful for some of the bigger helicopters back in those days that liked to use 6s batteries these days i'd just buy a 6s battery of the right size because it's an awful lot cheaper whenever you're trying to put batteries together always try and make sure that they're the same type capacity don't try and mix and match it's just a recipe for disaster particularly when you're going to try do things in parallel so make sure that you are going to pick batteries that have the same C rating the same capacity rating and the same voltages as well that way you'll avoid the majority of hiccups that you're going to bump into you can connect more than two packs together in this way in fact we'll get quite sophisticated by the end we'll be connecting them in series then in parallel and that is how some batteries are actually created but do exercise extreme care when connecting lipo batteries together lipo batteries really don't like being short circuited and they will potentially start to overheat and could even catch fire and that's how some of those videos that you see on youtube with lipo batteries in flames happen the other common way is they drive a nail through them that tends to do it too so be very careful and respectful with lipo batteries they pack an awful lot of punch into a small space, but you don't want to let all that energy out in one go and nasty things will happen. So do triple check all your connections before making them. Make sure that you haven't accidentally got a positive and a negative the wrong way around. Otherwise, when you're trying to solder that last little piece, there'll be a big blue spark and a snapping sound. So now we've got all the warnings out of the way, let's talk about connecting things in serial. And this is how the cells are connected inside a lipo battery again check my videos introduction to remote control for basics of lipo batteries but each of these cells produces between three and a half and 4.2 volts and by connecting them together serially which is what we're looking at now you get the pack voltage so if each of these is three and a half to 4.2 volts that's how we end up with a 12 volt 3s pack now to connect three in serial and again you could do it with two you could do it with three you could do it with four five six however many you wanted the way you do it is you connect the outer ground and positive leads on the very outside packs and then the other packs you connect the positive to the negative and the other way around and in fact this is also how it's done inside electronic appliances if you look at a battery bay you'll notice that usually the positive of one battery is connecting to the negative of the other and the terminals that are actually powering the device are at the other end of the battery bay so this is a very common way of doing it 
Now in serial connections, what does it actually do? Well, it increases the voltage. So the voltage of the pack goes up, just like we talked about the number of cells in a LiPo pack being three and a half to 4.2 volts. You add those up, you get a 12.6 volt LiPo pack. It keeps the current capacity the same because the current actually flows through each of the cells because of the way they're connected. So let's look at an example. So here we have three LiPo batteries. These are three S12 volt, 1000 milliamp power LiPo batteries. If we connected them in this way, then what we're essentially getting out the other side is a 9S 36 volt, 1000 milliamp hour LiPo battery. So there the voltage has gone up. It's whatever the voltage are in the individual LiPos or cells that you're connecting in serial, but the capacity is going to remain the same. So the next way to connect the batteries together is in parallel. Now, parallel is quite handy uh, because it's going to keep the voltage the same, but this time it's going to increase the current capacity and also the milliamp power ratings as well. Now, recently I looked at building this TBS Kaipina 2 wing. Uh, this is a beautiful wing and at the back it has room for multiple XT60 connectors so you can plug the batteries in side by side. Now, luckily, I'm using a blooming big battery in here that fits the bay beautifully, provides great central gravity, so I'm doing it all with one battery. But if I had three smaller batteries, I could solder additional XT60 connectors in this power distribution board at the back and plug them in, and they're being plugged in parallel. So if you want to connect batteries in parallel, how do you do it? Well, first of all, you connect all the negative leads together into the output, and that's all that power distribution board is doing in that TBS wing. And then you connect all of the positive leads together, and you've done it. And this time, again, it's going to keep the voltage the same, because the voltage is all connected together, but you can access the capacity in parallel. So if we look at those same examples again, here's the same 3S, 12 volt, 1000 milliamp power LiPo batteries connected in parallel. This time, the result appears as a 3S 12 volt, 3000 milliamp power LiPo battery. And that's exactly why it's using the TBS wing, because it isn't increasing the voltage. So the voltage is staying the same. So the way that the motors and the SCs and everything is powered isn't going to change the more batteries you plug in, but you're going to get more capacity. So to finish off, let's talk about some really wacky stuff. Uh, a lot of the questions I've had on that original video are talking, can I do parallel and series? And the answer is, yes, you can. So here, for example, is one of the setups that we've just done. I'll just take a second to have a look at it, try and guess which one it is. Yep, is in series. So we have three batteries connected in series. And then we have another three batteries connected in series. And then we can connect both of those in parallel. Now, both of those serial packs, again, appear as 36 volt, 1000 milliamp power packs. Just to see if you've got the hang of this, before I go on to the next slide and show the answer, what will the resultant capacity and voltage be by connecting two of those 36 volt, 1000 milliamp power virtual batteries together in parallel. And the answer is, it's going to give you a 36 volt, 2000 milliampere hour pack. And that's again, because parallel, the voltage remains the same, but you get the benefit of the milliamp hours, you add those up. So in summary, hopefully that has made a little bit more sense, the original one, and it's answered a few more questions. Again, take care when connecting batteries up, the thing to remember from this video is when you're doing a connection serially, it increases the voltage, but the current and milliamp power capacity remain the same. And that again is how the cells are in, inside a 3S or 4S LiPo battery. That's just how they connect them up. Each cell that's added to the pack adds about another four volts to the overall pack voltage, but doesn't add any more capacity. Or if you connect it in parallel, it's the other way around. The voltage remains the same, but you get an awful lot more current and the milliamp power capacity increases with the overall capacity in the individually connected cells or batteries too. And again, that's also handy if you want to charge multiple packs together as well. Last little tip I'll give you, this hopefully explains where some 
of the nomenclature comes from for batteries. So the S and P, you'll see it written down occasionally and it can be very confusing. Why, why is it a 3S pack? The S stands for serial. So if you have a 12 volt 3S LiPo pack, the S stands for serially connected. You can also see that written, or it used to be written an awful lot, as 3S1P, i.e. there's three batteries connected in series. However, you can also get things like 3S2P packs, and that is three lots of batteries connected in series, and there's two of those connected in parallel. And if you look back on the previous slide, that's exactly what I've just described. So hopefully that clears up some more of the confusion about serial and parallel, and also explains where the S comes from when we're talking about two, three, and four S LiPo packs. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organized in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.